Hey guys, BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Let's get serious now. Okay. You're not staring at that abortion. Um, let's see here. What are we doing? Ah, uh, this guy's ready. We are gonna look at a. I'm gonna take the lid off because it's got all the guy's personal information on it. Little X Force here. Uh, we're gonna look at X Force two by four. A short little abortion power power wires. Um, I see a handful of things wrong with this and we're not even going to hook it up yet. Ah, let's hook it up anyway. Give me a second. Okay, no smoke coming out of it immediately. That's, that's a good sign. And we'll talk through it and it keys up. So we got the variable all the way open. Let's go over here and take a hot look at this thing for a second. That's a thousand watts like here. Turn the camera. I'll lock it in with laser precision here. Zoom on in here for a hot second. Okay, that's a thousand watt slug and peak. I'll show you how much drive. Hello, about 20 watts, right? Hello, hello. Houston, we have problems. Okay, let's pull this back out here for a second. I think I already know what the problems are, but we're going to go in here to verify. So, that is hot. That whole stupid mess is hot. That balance resistor is hot. And the output resistor is hot. But oh, sir, we have two dead pills. But oh, see, these two transistors are hot. Let's see if we can get this manipulator around where the camera can see it. Those two transistors are producing heat. One of those two is dead. This mess is hot. This whole hot mess is hot. Okay. Well, since we're only allowed to buy four of these a month now, these 22, 2879s, um, this is going to be an expensive repair. There's one transistor being dead. And I have a feeling that it is this one here. And I base that off of the way the resistor is sitting up and there's solder work here. So they put a bigger resistor here to compensate for the imbalance. And, uh, they were hoping they could just replace the 10 ohmer. Listen, guys, when I say this to you, this is in all seriousness. If that 10 ohmer is burnt, that means this transistor is no good. So replacing this little tiny resistor down here. Zoom on in here. Replacing this little tiny resistor right here will not make the problem go away. So we got to pull this uh, this whole two pill section apart and when we do that we're going to go ahead and give it all the power wire upgrades we're going to redo the input so it's not this 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 shit doesn't need to be in here we're going to get rid of this aftermarket something or other we're going to put the right size variable in here they man I'm, I'm really screwing up with my cinematography here today put the right size variable in it because that's something they stole out of a Texas star Yep, we're going to go clean it up. Yay! Because we did it my way. Okay, so, um, I added a bunch of stuff to this and took out a bunch of stuff too. So we got rid of the little Texas Star straight from China bullshit um, variable. Got rid of that completely. And uh, we went with a big old school... Uh, made in the USA 
5 watt variable 100 ohm potentiometer and then I gave it a full power wire upgrade and replaced all your power wires got rid of these old gross corroded piles of garbage um, changed your input tune around completely um, changed your output tune out around completely um, got rid of all these unnecessary resistors of all the wrong values and uh, yeah we gave it a, a very light bath what I mean by that is I washed it to get all the crap away from around the legs of the transistors and cleaned it up what ended up happening was this transistor was bad that one was good it had a gain of 44 these were way up in gain um, they're in the 50s so I went ahead and I grabbed a brand new transistor and put it in there for you and uh, yeah just basically cleaned it up more solder spooge does not fix the problem we'll find so I got the tin ready to drop on look at that this was pre me I came along and I told everybody about the cabinet I gotta flip the fan over so why I flip the fan over I want to talk to you guys about something I um the other day I, I went to make some hot dogs in the microwave and I was standing there and I was looking at the the window of the microwave and I was thinking about how the shield that allows us to see into the microwave works. And what was trolling through my little brain was little holes in the door of the microwave. Believe it or not, those are a tuned cavity. And how it works is it doesn't block the RF from leaving the door. The RF blocks the RF from leaving the door. So if you have a little hole and then you energize that with a little bit of RF, it hits that cavity and it starts to run in a circle and then bounce. Then its motion becomes random. And it has to run to the edge of the metal first because it's attracted, because the door is grounded. So it's going to run, but it's not going to go to ground. It's going to see that as a tuned load space, right? And that led me to another idea. That's disgusting. Ew. That is disgusting. Oh, i got to clean this. Hey, let me do another idea that I had about tune horn and uh, tune uh, horn antennas. So, like, if you had a big dish and you were wanting to pass two or three or four frequencies down a tuned conical space down the inside of, let's say, like a satellite dish, or this will work. And so you got your big dish, and off the bottom of the dish you've got your waveguide, because off the top of the dish you've got your reflector, right? And you can have, here's your dish, right? This is your dish. And then in here you're going to have your tuned reflector point, right? I know this is novel. Um, I was just thinking about the different ways you could have different frequencies of tuned reflectors at the top. And how your 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 center P point on the on the dish is going to guide the RF down. Well, as you're going down the pipe, you're going to have your final shortest wave frequency at the bottom of this pipe. And as you're going along, you're going to have different perforated screens that are tuned with different cavity spaces. So what will happen is the RF will come down and it's going to hit that same principle that takes place with the microwave door and it's going to tune it, which is going to make a directional lens just like you work with like a, like a telescope, let's say, with light, even though our RF energy is part of the light spectrum or part of the energy spectrum. So you'd have your highest frequency at the bottom and you start screening off your your upper frequencies as you go down through the pipe so I started to think about 
all the problems that come along with having a gimbalized antenna. Something that is on... Um, oh god, that is disgusting. Oh, that is... Like something that would run off the back of Mama June's ass if she spent six months in a hippie van making love on the road. Oh god, that is gross. Um, so, that led me to another kind of mental endeavor. Now, remember, hot dogs take about 20, 30 seconds for the electrons inside the water that's inside the hot dogs to get a little bit of more energy to them and start banging into each other and creating heat. So this, this whole thing took a few minutes to get through my little brain. I had an idea about how to make a balanced 50 ohm passable waveguide and pass it through a hydrostatic oil based bearing for a disc or a cone shaped um, like deep space antenna because I, I've always wondered what the DB gain is the DB loss gain of the coil stack of coax inside of a satellite dish for like the deep space network exactly what the signal loss is and how they've had to I think how they've had to overcome that is that they have tracking motors and they have to remember how many turns they have and going on with their stack of wire that's inside the dish and I don't know I think I might have come up with something special in my brain out of my little retarded hamster head brain that I have um, I got a lot of friends you guys I mean I got I got a gentleman that just befriended me here last week who has spent his entire life working on the Tomahawk cruise program Okay, and then I got another guy that works for Boeing as a as a cabinet maker. That is a deceiving term, let me tell you. There's a there's a video that's out there. I'll clean now, right? Mostly clean. We got all the pubic hair and everything else off of this thing. Okay, so there's this, there's this documentary, it's called Hitler Stealth's Airplanes, it's, it was done by WGBH Boston, which is actually um, a relabel of um, the BBC programs that come out of Britain. God, the Britons make great documentaries. Anyhow, you'll, you'll see this, this, that's a 32, jeez. These guys, they go to the Smithsonian and they go look at this all-wood airplane that was built. I'm not going to go into that. It'll take me three hours to discuss that. But the guys that re replicate this airplane for Lockheed, they're all called cabinet makers. And what they do is they build things out of wood and then they put them on a radar platform out in the middle of the desert and measure its RCS radio cross-section reflected return cross-section. I mean, I got, I got friends in all, all over the place, but what I need to find, guys, is I need to find somebody that I can have a very serious conversation that's involved with or was part of um, the building and the construction of the deep space network that we have. You now, somebody that worked like Goldstone or might have been on loan to Parks or you know, something like that. That's that's what I'm in the hunt for. So, if all of my super smart friends, I've got some friends that are at the uh, National Quiet Zone, but he doesn't work there. He just lives down the road in Virginia. They're part of the Deep Space Network too, but it's not. Or hell, even somebody that works like Arecibo or something like that. I just I need to find somebody in that community. I can start having a little bit of a correspondence with because I think I've got something in the back of my brain that I would really feel would be worth looking into if it hasn't already been looked into which I'm pretty sure it's already been invented and somebody out there is carrying a patent on it and blah 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 but 
I, I just I have an idea about how to decrease the DBM loss throughout the antenna by eliminating the coax and having a very finely machined resealable raceway but the thing is is that kind of coax you have to be able to carry pulse energy um, there's some some of the stuff down in parks that uh, the transmitters run at 100 kilowatts so I've got I've got to I gotta find somebody that's willing to call me and have a an open discussion with me about it about antennas that's in that that field so if you guys know somebody or know a Noah guy or no 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 a guy steer in my direction I'd greatly appreciate it feeling I'm gonna end up replacing this fan because oh. we can hear this guy hitting hear that I'm not gonna listen to that I know my guy's not gonna listen to that This, if we look down here on the long axis here, across the flat axis, I mean, you can see where the little paper cover is starting to come off. And that's what's rubbing. Give this a little heat and see if we can get the adhesive to stick to it. It's 2 a.m. in the morning, by the way, you guys, and I have spent most of my week dealing with my elderly family member who is going through a time of crisis in their life, and I feel, honestly, that I'm coming to the end of having to deal with that, which has been a blessing. For me, I look at it as a blessing because... The opportunity of getting to learn how to help manage um, the healthcare needs of this person will only make me stronger and more prepared to be able to deal with the inevitable of having to uh, help my parents at the, that time in their, their life. This has been a very trying week in a well, very trying last month, this situation. And how that directly correlates to you guys is that I am going to be able to produce more of these videos now. I'm going to be able to come out here and work more since the situation is coming to its, its conclusion here. And in the same breath, it's been very nice to see my family members all come together and us all have one common goal to be able to help this one person in our family, which has been very refreshing. In most families, you don't have that kind of interaction. So I need somebody in the radio astronomy world, or I need somebody that is in the maintenance division of an incredibly high gain, steerable, high pulse modulated antenna field. And I know if I put this feeler out, I'm going to find somebody. And what's going to be really funny to me is going to be sitting back and waiting for the, the inevitable, I know a guy. They're going to call me. People are going to call me, and they're going to present themselves in a certain way based off the video. It's interesting. But we get to the bottom of it pretty quick. We figure out who's actually got the mustard and who doesn't pretty quick. So this will be interesting. I just want to throw it out there because I like to have people that I can call and contact and talk to like, hey, have we ever thought of this or have they ever thought of that? Just saying. Because you never know where a good idea is going to come from. Okay. 
see how this shakes out now. That's quite enough. So the reason we got to flip the cabinet over, just or the fan over into the, the enclosure, in case I know there's probably going to be a couple of you that have never watched one of my videos before. Well, I got to come up with a different way to organize my stuff. Um, the reason we got to flip it over is because it's easier to push pressure into the enclosure than it is to pull a vacuum upon it. And what I mean by that is if we think about how this works, the way the air, if we're pulling a vacuum upon the enclosure, or not a vacuum because vacuum is not even a real thing, we're pulling a low pressure on the enclosure, the air is going to flow up from this opening at the front end of the cabinet. This is going to bypass most of the parts and it's going to take the path of least resistance to the fan. So if we're pulling a, a lower pressure inside the cabinet, that means we're pulling a vacuum or a lower pressure here at the back, the intake, and we're moving air through the box, around, and then out. Well, that doesn't work out so well, because <clears throat> a lot of components then are not in, within the airflow of the fan. And so there's two things that we want to do when we pressurize an enclosure in this application is we want to move air down so you got to think of like water flowing down and how it's going to hit all these components and wrap itself around and then it's eventually going to run itself out down and then across the heat sink and pick up to its, its maximum ability to be able to transfer heat to the air across the heat sink fins and then exhaust out. Well the way that it was set up was that it was pulling air through the cabinet instead of pushing air through it we get much higher flow rate of air pressure if we can pressurize an enclosed space and vent it out. But then again, I did have a HVAC guy call me the other day. Happens to be a good friend of mine. He talks a lot though, like a lot. Like all the time proceeded to tell me that, you know, I've got a little wind station and I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm like, yep, I have no clue because, well, I'm not an expert in that field. And I don't know Dick from Shinola. I'll be the first one to tell anybody that. I don't know anything about anything. Okay, so let's see how we worked out here. Okay, so we're going to put all these screws in it. Um, when I pull screws out of a cabinet and I see that they're all different lengths and this kind of thing, it's like somebody went to Ace or Coast to Coast or maybe even on the Home Depot and they, they were forced to buy what they needed. These screws are too long here and where they were placed, um, were these, these screws here are way too long. The way they were placed inside the cabinet um, they were going to either contact a, the heat sink fin and they were going to cause you problems with the pin nuts that are in this thing or they were going to smack into components on the inside of the box. So we're just going to go ahead and put all new hardware in here that's for you and I'm going to forget about it, hit it, quit it, and move on. I love these old school cabinets back when Carl and Carol were in business. What's going on? Do we have a stripped out one? 632 bit here. So this level of detail is required at every every single one of these silly things. So here I'm putting the uh, Putting the 632 tap through it because I don't want to take the chance of pushing the pin nut out or stripping it out. And yes, I have an actual tap holder, but I'm just gonna. All I got to do is chase this. I don't want to get up and get that out of that drawer. Okay. See if we can get this to go to bed. See that TV? 
See that old school TV that's sitting over there? I've had that since I was 12. It's the only reason I still have it in here. I'm hooked up and it works, but I don't want to turn it on. I've got a 54 inch flat screen sitting just right over here to the left that I use for actually TV. Okay. Let's see how we did here. Thousand watt slug and peak, thousand watt slug and average, five watt slug and reverse back from the bird, ten thousand watt demo load, five watt slug that sits between the RCI twenty nine fifty. It's gonna be right there, twenty nine fifty, and the two by four. <sighs> Yay! Okay, so I'll show you drive. Ooh. Fourteen volts. Variables all the way open. All right. Now, take 20 and 50 out of line. Frankenstein's, uh, Frankenstein's cousin here. This is the D-Rail Cobra 29. Which has got a whole lot more audio to it than the 2950. Hello. Less power, but... Hello. Look at the bird numbers now. Hello. working better than when it was new <laughs> it's just that simple gentlemen it's been a busy busy week and I've got an incredibly busy week coming up next week um, I have a $55,000 project that's coming to fruition next week that I've been doing with one of my closest friends trust me there'll be a whole video on it the battery technology that I'm just about ready to bring to the game is going to blow everybody's minds. The way you look at the lead acid batteries in your vehicles are going to change. The way that you guys look at your shootout vehicle batteries is going to change your mindset. Any battery that you got to pay $5,000 for, it, it uh, you better do everything but be able to take care of you when you're in the bathroom in the office in your private time. Guys, I gotta get. Um, next up is a 12 pack that I gotta go through and make it right again for the guy. I'm gonna try and get back on track. I've got tonight and I've got tomorrow, and I got a couple other days here that I can actually get out here and work, and then I've gotta finish this other monumental project. And once I get that one done, then I can go and I can come back around. I gotta finish up a four pill LD Moss box. I got a six pill base unit that's getting ready to come out that's going to go up for sale. A two pill base unit that's already been sold that another guy ordered and then canceled his order. So I'm going to, it's going to come out probably the week after next. We got a lot going on over here, you guys. A lot. And uh, I appreciate everybody's patience and support and understanding. And I really appreciate everybody letting me know um, that they're supportive of me taking care of my elderly family member. Guys, I got to go. I'm on to the next one. I appreciate you all. More projects in, more projects out. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. And if you like what you've seen, make sure to click subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, take a dang second and give me a thumbs up for God's sake. It just takes a second. Give me a thumbs up. I gotta go, guys. And remember, if you know somebody that works in radio astronomy or works at like Goldstone or Parks or any of the, the Deep Space Network, 
Ask him if I can chat with him for a hot minute. It'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys. Your friend in Idaho is gone. Bump bump. Bye bye.